behalf of the entire B-2 team, I am proud to present the first B-2 bomber. Out of the closet and into the California sunlight came one of America's most closely guarded military secrets. The B-2 stealth bomber, far and away the most expensive weapon system ever built. The U.S. Air Force designed it, Northrop built it. Now they want Congress to sign the check. The B-2 is revolutionary. It represents a crucial leap in our strategic modernization program. Its stealth capability will permit it to penetrate the most sophisticated air defenses and survive well into the 21st century. Stealth is based on the so-called flying wing developed by Northrop in 1949 and rejected because of stability problems. Now they claim its design gives a much reduced radar image and stands the best chance of penetrating Soviet airspace. But the cost is raising eyebrows on Capitol Hill. They're already saying that the bombers are going to cost almost half a billion dollars apiece. But if they have the same type of cost overrun as they did with the B-1, it's entirely possible that this bomber would be literally worth its weight in gold, as much as eight or nine hundred million dollars per plane. Like many secrets in America, stealth was only ever half a secret. Even in car commercials like this one, it received early previews. Shrouded in secrecy for years, the stealth bomber will soon be introduced to the public. For the record, we introduced ours first. The real thing joins a sister fighter announced earlier this month and will enter a bomber fleet with only average reliability ratings. The chances of trouble-free production don't take boomerang, but the top-secret B-2 stealth bomber, supporters say, can strike and return undetected by enemy radar. On a Californian desert airstrip, it has begun its first taxi runs in preparation for a maiden flight, likely within 10 days. But with 132 B-2s on order, costing at least $500 million each, Stealth is now the most expensive warplane ever and a massive drain on the overstretched U.S. defense budget. Skeptics in Congress want the program delayed or cut. The future of the stealth bomber may depend less upon how it performs in the skies of California than here in the committee rooms of Washington. The Reagan administration refused even to discuss the stealth project, but now the Bush administration seems almost hungry for publicity in order to ensure continued congressional funding. Today, the House Armed Services Committee had their chance to interrogate the men behind the B-2 and signal trouble ahead. The B-2 program is in a lot of trouble, a lot of difficulty. Uh, not for technical reasons, but it's simply the price tag. Air Force Chief of Staff General Larry Welch took the congressman through elaborate Pentagon salesmanship, a slide presentation of the B-2's benefits. Then his boss put the Bush administration case. The B-2 is critical to deterrence because it provides enduring penetration capability for the bomber force. In the 1940s, the U.S. developed the Flying Wing, stealth's early ancestor, later scrapped. As the costs climbed towards $70 billion, B-2 supporters must win the congressional dogfights to keep stealth from joining it in the museum. The moment of truth and of intense political pressure for the B-2 stealth bomber rolled out this morning at the end of the 12,000-foot runway in Palmdale, California. The first attempt to take off two days ago had been aborted for technical reasons. A senator had warned that the project was too costly to be a stealth taxi. So the bird had to fly in order to survive, and it did. Eighteen months behind schedule, the stealth had been more extensively tested pre-flight than any other aircraft ever built. But this was the test that mattered, and it passed. For a little under two hours in the morning light, the stealth bomber circled above the Mojave Desert before preparing to land at Edwards Air Force Base. At more than $500 million a copy, it's the most expensive aircraft ever built. Intended to penetrate radar defenses, it shows up in high profile on the defense budget. But the proving flight was picture perfect. The pilots and Air Force had nothing but praise for the plane and the people who built it. We love them, so we have to you know, give them something back. They gave us the airplane, we gotta hand them something back. And of course, this will significantly add to our deterrent posture because we're talking about an airplane now 
that basically negates the air defenses that have been built up over the many, many years around the world. The Air Force has proved that the plane can fly. It hasn't yet convinced a reluctant Congress to buy it in sufficient quantities.